Buffalo, on the inside of Rowdy Tales's left wrist, there is a tattoo, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 25, it reads in black ink, an off-season addition for the Buffalo Bison's 23-year-old first baseman, my mom fights every day for her life and doesn't know if she's going to see the next one, says Jay's prospect Rowdy Tales. If I get met if I go 0 for 4, that's pretty selfish of me, Brian Blanco, Getty Images file photo, she is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future, the Blue Jays prospect said, reciting the biblical reference in the home dugout at Coca-Cola Field this past week. It is for his mom Lori, who is battling cancer. After discovering a lump in her armpit, she was diagnosed with stage 4 melanoma in late 2016. Little more than a year ago, she called from Taylor's childhood home in Elk Grove, Calif, with the news that she was cancer-free. But twice since spring training, in March, and for 10 days in early July, Taylor's has traveled more than 2,500 miles to be home with his family after the aggressive cancer returned. Article continued below today, he is rarely away from his phone. Every time he steps on the field, 90 times this season, heading into Friday, he wonders, when we get back, is my mom going to be alive, read more, opinion, Rosie DeMano, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Looks right at home one step away from Blue Jays Phil Admania hits AAA Buffalo Blue Jays Uber prospect Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Heading to AAA Buffalo, between 2017 and 2018, it's taken a dramatic bad turn for my family with my mom, Taylor said in an interview. She was cancer-free as of, like, June of last year and now we're working with probably a fatal form of brain cancer. You're seeing a change in all of us in the family, and it's affecting me on and off the field, for the better, I would say. I know it's a struggle to have my mom in the state that she's in, but everything happens for a reason and I accept that, article continued below to Les says he doesn't turn off his emotions when he gets to the park, it's one of those things you're never going to get away from, he said. Last season, trying to play during his mom's illness for the first time, he kept his feelings to himself, believing it was the best way to cope. This season has been different. He says that talking more openly about what he's going through has helped, on and off the field, being vulnerable isn't a bad thing, he said. It allows me to be a better player, to listen better, to understand. It allows me to be a better person, and that's been the biggest thing. My teammates and my coaching staff have told me, you being more vulnerable has made you a better person, a better teammate, I've calmed down. I don't get mad as often. Having a bad game's not always fun, but it could always be worse. My mom fights every day for her life and doesn't know if she's going to see the next one. If I get met if I go 0 for 4, that's pretty selfish of me. This season he has reconnected with the Philadelphia Phillies' Reese Hoskins, a friend growing up. Hoskins' mom Kathy died of breast cancer in 2009 when the outfielder was a sophomore in high school. Taylor's has also leaned on D. Brown, the scout who helped sign the 30th round draft pick who, as the first baseman put it, has lost all three of his moms. Another constant source of support through the AA and AAA levels has been Bison's manager Bobby Meacham. We talk almost every day about it, Taylor's said. Anything from prayers to questions I have about the situation. Just a lot of things. While Taylor's outlook has changed, his big league goals have not. After hitting .297 with the AA New Hampshire Fisher Cats in 2016, putting up 23 home runs and 81 RBIs in 124 games, he arrived at spring training last year ranked among the Jays' top 10 prospects. At the time, with Edwin Encarnacion gone to Cleveland via free agency and Justin Smoke yet to break out, Taylor's was in the discussion for Major League duty that summer. But he struggled at the AAA level, slashing .222, .295, with 6 home runs and 56 RBIs in 122 games, and dropped to no. 30 in the Blue Jays system according to MLB Pipeline. 
He recalls being frustrated non-stop last season, and vowed to never let it happen again. I learned a lot last year, and I've really incorporated that into how I live my life and how I play now, he said. It's trending in the right direction. Through Thursday, Tales was hitting a solid .271 with 10 homers and 41 RBIs. He feels he's been hitting the ball consistently hard and to all fields, and that he is better at the plate than talent evaluators give him credit for. The defensive side of the game will always be a work in progress, he adds honestly, but not for lack of effort. Taylor's credits Smoke, injured shortstop Troy Tulowitzki, Meacham and Jay's third base coach Luis Rivera for pointing him in the right direction, I'm going to work on every aspect of my game, but defense is something people always fault me for, saying it's not good, I'm a defensive liability, he says, but I think it's getting better every year, as long as I keep working on it, in between the work and the worry, Taylor's is trying to keep the game of baseball in perspective, I'm just here to help the team win and have some fun, he says can't be mad that we get paid to play a game that kids do. We've played this our whole lives and now we're getting paid to do it, so you can't be frustrated about something like that. Laura Armstrong is a sports reporter based in Toronto. Follow her on Twitter, at Laura Army.